on YouTube. Give me just a second here. We will be live on Facebook. Three, two, one. And we're live. Wow, isn't that exciting? So uh, I guess uh, let's see here. Episode five, Whining with the Professor. The, uh, the kids have been home all day, cooped up in the house. Snow day today in Worcester. For like four inches of light, fluffy snow. So I'm not sure. Uh, There's just a notice on, on YouTube. Maybe somebody's watching. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we have to cancel snow for like four inches of light, fluffy snow. Now, at the same time, I am, I'm super glad that I'm not the one that has to make the decision. Because, um, you know, it seems like, oh, it's so lame they canceled snow school today. The kids could have gone to school. And at the same time, I, I suppose if one person gets hurt because you made the wrong decision, then you screwed up. So um, anyway, so Whiting with the Professor, Episode 5, Snow Day Today in Worcester. And um, last week, last week we had a, a South African Shannon Blanc. This week, we're going to have a Vouvre. So Vouvre, and that, in case you're, and you're wondering, is the, uh, the French version of the Chenin Blanc. And again, my favorite bottle opening technique. Did not have to get a bottle opener. Did not have to do the thing or screw the thing. I got, um, several years ago, my parents, they, they know I'm into wine. They're, they actually, they, my parents actually make wine, and one of these days I'll taste one of their wines. And hi, mom, if you're watching, maybe you are the one person who is, is watching right now. Uh, but uh, so they got me a uh, one of those fancy wine opener things where you like squeeze the thing and the, the thing pops out. I used it twice. It broke. And um, so I'm disappointed with fancy wine openers. And I just like the I like the one that the um, the, uh, the the waiters and waitresses use in the restaurant, you know, the one that fits in your back pocket. Because uh, in case, you know, if I'm going somewhere, I might want to fit it in my back pocket. The, uh, the kids are in the other room making a video. I'm not sure if the dancing is supposed to make me look that direction and laugh. Or if uh, they're just having fun. But at any rate, so we got a... Um, <clears throat> so this is the Justin Monomsue. Monomsue. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't speak French that well. But, uh, but it is a uh, Blanc de Blanc... Bouvre. Um, I confess I've had this one before. Last week we tasted a wine that I'd never had before. This one I already know that I like. If you guys want to dance on camera, come on over here. Okay. Oh, 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 she's making a video of me. Making a video. <coughs> so as you don't know, this is, uh, this is our youngest daughter, Emily. She uh, currently uh, has been cooped up in the house all day, snow day. Um, how much TV did you watch today? A lot. A lot, a lot. How many teeth do you have? Wait, what? How many teeth do you have? I don't know. Not as many as you used to have. No front teeth, huh? <coughs> and, and Michelle over here eating a piece of bread with butter on it. Okay, so, yeah, you're not going to have any of my wine, thank you. Um, you guys have anything to say to the camera? Hello! Little, little dance moves going on there. All right. Anyway, um, so let's get let's get to. Why is his nose higher than his eyes? I do not know. But his nose is higher than his eyes. Okay, let Daddy drink the wine. Yeah, let Daddy drink the wine. You should all train your kids to say that. Okay, so um, so it's nice and crisp on the front. Um, Michelle's showing you some slime that she made today, yesterday, yesterday. 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 What is this? No, your yesterday. cereal slime? No. Uh, oh, the cereal slime had bigger beads in it, right? Yeah. Okay. And I can whistle. You can whistle. <laughs> oh, <bye. laughs> okay. It's time for Daddy to to talk. And by the way. When you whistle in people's ears, it can hurt their ears. Are you doing the heart dance? Okay, cool. I'm your background. I'm your background. You're my background. Okay. 
So the background's usually quiet. When we do these videos, the background doesn't usually talk. So it's uh, it's it's sort of fruity. You can really taste the grape, um, but it's not it's not like overpowering the fruity. It uh, it's got a nice quick finish. It's very crisp. Um, again, a uh, a great great wine to just have after work. Sit, drink a couple glasses, relax, watch the kids dance, watch them fight. It doesn't matter as long as you're relaxing. So. Um, I've been uh, I've been thinking about what I want to talk about today, and uh, and so, so some of you know if you if you've uh, followed me before that um, that I I've got a few different things going on in my life. So uh, as, as you know, I have two beautiful daughters. I have a, a, a beautiful wife. In fact, um, uh, oh, as of a couple weeks ago, we have two cats, and, and someday I'll tell the story of the uh, of the cats and bringing them home. But um, but. Uh, so, in addition to having a, well, Michelle, you have the hamster. I don't have a hamster. Well, it's your house. It is in my house, but it's our house. It's a very, very, very fine house with two cats in the yard. Actually, they're in the bedroom. But um, anyway, so um, just, uh, all right, Emily, are you done having fun? No. Because I was trying to talk serious here. We can talk fun later. Oh, you're gonna make a message? Okay. Well, be gentle. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so so we get we get a lot of stuff going on. So uh, so my wife and I both uh, work full time jobs. We have two beautiful daughters. Um, in addition to those full time jobs, we own three corporations, and and we've just purchased. We're just in the in the process of closing on the, on the fourth, and. Um, Needless to say, we, we have a lot of stuff going on. We're, we're actually pretty busy people. Um, there's always something. I, I, years ago, it's, uh, it's actually kind of funny because I'll, I'll talk to people about the things I'm doing, the projects I have open, stuff I'm working on, and they'll tell me that, oh, I can't believe you get so much done. And, and every day at the end of the day, I just feel like I think I could have done more today. So, so we have different perspectives there. But I, I, I kind of want to talk about... Um, the origin of my my uh, wine enthusiasm, and and how I got to be on this uh, on this video blog podcast whatever whatever we call these things, where where we're doing this live every Wednesday at 7:30 p.m. Eastern time, and so um, it's not I don't I don't understand the difference between Eastern Standard Time and Eastern Daylight Time, so I just say Eastern. Perfect. Okay, so that was that was Michelle in the background. If you didn't notice that, so so at any rate, um, so we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm really excited about wine. I I, I mean I've talked about the uh, saying Camille to wine vine and and the fact that part of the reason I'm doing this is because I want to support them. I want to make sure that you go to the wine vine and buy some wine, um, because frankly I don't want to have to find a new place to go get my wine. It is a very convenient shop for me, and I love saying Camille. They're they're some of my best friends in the world. And, uh, and it's all because of my desire to know more about wine that I got to know them. So uh, several years ago, about a year before Michelle was born, I was in a very comfortable place in life. And, uh, and sitting, I remember, I, I specifically remember the moment. I'm sitting on my couch in the uh, upstairs family room, we called it at the time. It's now Emily's bedroom, but at the time it was our family room. It was actually like the only room that we... We lived in in the house, especially in the winter. Um, the the first year we moved into this house, we um, we could afford to pay for the heat, but we didn't want to. And I don't know if you've ever had one of those moments, but um, we uh, we would spend as little time in the kitchen as possible in order to prepare food, and then we would bring it up to this upstairs family room because there's a working fireplace in the upstairs family room. It was nice and enclosed. We'd have a fire every night. We'd sit in there, and it was it was like a nice, cozy, beautiful room. And then when it was time to go to bed, we'd go right around the corner into the master bedroom and go to bed and be piled up under the covers and stuff like that. And we would turn on the heat sparingly and we would keep the heat on just to make sure the pipes didn't freeze. And that was, uh, that was about, it must have been about 11, 12 years ago now, the, uh, the moment that I'm sitting in that family room and I'm at a place in my life where I've decided 
I wanted to collect something. And, uh, and I love reading. I love books. I love everything about books. And so I, I wanted to become a book collector. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be able to go buy those, those books, travel around to estate sales, find the, the best books, and, then, and maybe then resell them or collect them, whatever it was going to be. The message from Emily, it says, trust my dad. Happy day or night. We have two cats, Shadow and Niku. And we have a hamster, Sammy, or as I call him, the Samster. And so, I heart the world. Oh, and Emily hearts the world. People on Facebook can read Emily's message. Okay, so where was I? So I sit on the couch in Emily's bedroom, which used to be the family room. And uh, I wanted to collect something. I wanted to collect books. And I was so excited about the idea of collecting books. And I, was, I was psyched about it. And so I was sipping a glass of wine. And I'm reading on the internet like sort of lounged back. You know how you do the laptop on your lap when you're lounged back in the, uh, in the sofa? So I'm reading on the internet about how to collect books. And let me tell you, what I learned in that process was the people that collect books do not share information freely on the internet. And so, so what I learned in that moment was that it was going to be really, really hard for me to want to collect books but I was lounging on the sofa, I had my glass of wine. I think it was, uh, it was probably a red wine. There is some chance at that moment that it was two buck chuck um, that I was drinking. And it was back when two buck chuck cost $2 a bottle. So, uh, but it was, it was a red wine. I think it might've been a Merlot, California Merlot, something like that. I don't know. I, was, it was, I liked it enough. It was, it was good for me. I was sitting on the sofa and um, I was getting really frustrated with the book people. The book people were not sharing their information with me. But I really, really, really wanted to collect something. And I says, well, hey, people collect wine. I like wine. I mean, I'm drinking wine now. Maybe I could collect wine. And so I started researching on the Internet about collecting wine. And so it turns out the winos are not the same as the book nerds. Because after a couple glasses, the winos will tell you anything. And, uh, and so I started researching this, and I was like, oh, this is a great idea. And because uh, and, and, I like wine. I didn't know anything about wine, but I knew that I liked it. And so, so I started to get excited about the idea of collecting wine. And that was right about the moment that I, I discovered the wine vine. Uh, we, we could figure it out if we compared calendars and stuff. But um, this, this new wine and cheese shop had opened up on the corner that I walked past all the time. And um, they'd been open for almost a year at the time when I, when I discovered them. And, and so I just walked in one day, and I noticed the sign that says we do tastings on Fridays. And, and so I, I, I explained to Sang, Sang was working, and I explained to Sang you know, what I was having for dinner, what, what I kind of wanted. And he picked out a bottle of wine, I bought it, I brought it home, I loved it. Uh, and so I went back on Friday for the tasting, it was an amazing group of people that were at that at that tasting, and uh, and it was it was like a bunch of friends hanging out for an hour or so in the afternoon, and it was you know people were coming and going. You didn't have to be there the whole time, and and I just fell in love with the store, with the people, just Sang and Camille, and all the people, all the customers that would come in for those Friday tastings, and um, and I started to experience wines that were slightly better than Two Buck Chuck. And, um, and, and over time, our palates grow, and, and we don't always, the, the wines that I loved 15 years ago would not be the wines that I love today. And we experience new grapes, and we experience new, new flavors and things like that. And, uh, and so, so lately, for the last year or two, I've, I've really loved the Chenin Blanc grape. One of the only ways to get the Chenin Blanc grape in the U.S. is to buy a Vouvray because there's, a, there's several French producers that bring in um, the Vouvray, or, or I guess importers that bring it in. Um, I, I, I mentioned last week on the podcast that, um, that I, the reason that uh, I, I got interested in, in Chenin Blanc was because of a, uh, a podcast that I listened to. And I said, well, i got to go try that grape because the guy talked about it. And he said it was great. And so, so I asked Sang and, and I tried it out. That was a while ago. So, uh, but anyway, more back to my journey of, of wine and wine collecting. So, um, so we started to, uh, to, 
we started to, um, to, to get to know Sang and Camille, going to the tastings on Fridays. They did a seminar series where they had people, they had a, um, a, a wine aficionado come in and he, he would, uh, they would pour some flights of wine. We would taste some different wines. He would talk about the region they came from and, and the things that, that people traditionally experience when they drink that wine. I remember one of them in particular, it was a, a South African um, wine. Uh, I can't, I don't remember the grape or the producer at the moment, but I remember the people sitting around our table um, thought that it, it reminded, so there was a little bit of tar in it. I guess there was a tobacco field near where the, the vineyard was. And so there was from the, from the ground, some of the, the tars and stuff from the tobacco plants that actually migrated over. This is what they say anyway. And, and so you can taste it actually in the grape. And, and there really was sort of a tarish flavor in that, in that grape. And it was kind of like, um, well, I, I, I described it as sort of like, it reminded me of a low sulfur diesel. Now, now I say that, but at the same time, I bought two cases. So I, I really liked it. And uh, yes, this is Emily at the beach, a picture of Emily at the beach. <laughs> this is, I, I, you, get, you get what you ask for. I asked the the kids to be nice and to uh, to be quiet while I did my video tonight, and uh, it you know, of course they're cooped up in the house all day. They're full of energy and they're ready to uh, to participate. So um, anyway, so anyway, we went through this series of, uh, of learning about wines. It was actually it was actually kind of funny because the first of those wine seminars, uh, my wife and I went to together, and um, went to that seminar. And the next one, and, and she didn't have any wine because she was about seven months pregnant. So a month later, I went to the next one, and she did not accompany me. Um, and if you if you haven't noticed from looking at the girls, that my wife is Chinese, and uh, and so which is why our girls are so beautiful because they're what half, uh, well, no, they look like their mother. Okay, so um, anyway. She didn't come with me the second time because then she was eight months pregnant. She didn't really, almost eight months, I don't know, six months or seven months. It was in there, right? She didn't feel like going to the wine seminar. And, uh, and so it happened to be that there was an Asian woman who sat next to me the next month and, and another a woman who, who sat at the table who's a good friend of ours now. We were just getting to know them at the time. But she says, oh my gosh, you already had the baby. And so it was funny because all the Asian people look the same, I guess. But, uh, but no, that actually wasn't my wife. That was Betty, who we got to know pretty well also from going to the wine vine. And um, <clears throat> anyway, long story short, I got into wine because I wanted to collect something. As I'm, uh, as I'm going through the process of learning about collecting wine, actually, uh, I actually I did some pretty thorough research on the Internet. Google was my friend. And, uh, and then I also, I bought several books, you know, I get French wine for dummies and I get these and I, I read and all these things because I want to understand the thing that I'm doing. And, uh, and I got to the moment when I realized I needed a wine cellar. And so I started reading blogs where people were talking about building a wine cellar and most of them were pretty technical. They say, well, you got to maintain the temperature between this and this, and you got to, you got to do this and you got to do that. But, um, but my, my favorite one that I read was uh, the, and, and this is my advice to you, if you're thinking about building a wine cellar, if you have not yet built one and you're thinking about building one, the best advice I got when I was building mine was that the first and number one most important thing that you're going to do when you build a wine cellar is make sure that your wife believes that it is absolutely essential for you to have a wine cellar. Now, the person who wrote that blog post, blog post he suggested diamonds. Um, and, and it turned out that my, my technique was a little bit simpler because my wife was good at math, and she'd been following along with my research and stuff, and she had come to believe, and, and she may be watching live. She was watching live last week when we did this. Well, anyway, she had... Um, she had I don't know if she actually believed it, but she was willing to stipulate that it was possible that um, that wine increases in value over time, and that that she liked. And so my my technique, and and I don't know if she even observed the technique or not, but my technique was to buy some wine that was thought that it might increase in value over time, 
put it in the basement when the basement was a, a reasonable place to keep it. And then as spring approached and the basement was warming up, we had to build a wine cellar because we had to protect that investment. Now, I, I have no idea if she even was paying attention to my little subtle, uh, <laughs> subtle moves there, but uh, but it was my it was my technique. It was what made me feel good. Um, that and the fact that we built the wine cellar in the basement of the barn perhaps was was part of it. But um, someday uh, someday I'll have to tell you a story about building the wine cellar. But um, what I so the reason get back to the to the beginning of the story here the reason that I wanted to talk about this origin of my my love for wine and my um, and building the wine cellar and all those things was uh, was because one of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm I'm taking a course in in online marketing specifically I'm I'm taking a course where you're you're learning how to sell information products. And, and one of the steps in this selling information products is to tell your story about why, um, you know, why you're a person that's worth listening to. So say you've become super successful in something, you've developed a course about it, you want to sell that course to people who are not yet super successful there. If you stand up on the stage or if you talk to them as if you're the super successful person, then you're not likely to em have them empathize with you. But if you tell them about the stuff that happened to you before you became super successful and how you got into the thing that caused you to be there, then you can have empathy with them. And if you have empathy, they're more likely to buy your, your course that you're selling. And so I've, I've got a couple of information products that we're trying to sell. Um, and I'm actually trying to use this to bring in some, some business and some traffic leads for our manufacturing company. So as I'm learning how to do these things, I'm, I'm practicing them. So thank you guys tonight. I got to have wine. You got to be guinea pigs as I as I practiced the whole art of telling telling an origin story, and uh, and so if you want um, if you want more information about this course I'm taking, you reach out to me. I will uh, I'll share that with you uh, because I have an affiliate link, and if you buy it from through me, I get some money. Uh, uh, but anyway, if you you don't want to reach out to me, you can you can Google Russell Brunson and uh, and ClickFunnels. And it's actually, uh, it's kind of a, an amazing thing. Um, again, uh, I got the, uh, the, the Vouvray at the Wine Vine today. It was, um, it's under $20. I think it's about $19 for this bottle of wine. It is an amazing bottle of wine for under $20. Last month's bottle, uh, last month, last week's bottle, the, um, the South African Chenin Blanc that I had was about $17. They're about the same cost. The, um, this one is a little bit... I don't really want to say more refined. Actually, as it opens up here, it's almost like a crisp green apple at the end, but then it just chops off. It's it's not a very long end on this wine. This is kind of a short finish. It's so it, it, it the nose is so bright and and refreshing. I could probably get some. Uh, maybe I get you know you used to rub the Vicks under your nose. Maybe I get some some vaporizer stuff or the stuff you rub under your nose made out of this. Because that would totally keep me going all day. But um, a, uh, a Vouvray, Justin Monmousu. Monmousu, I don't know. You guys can read the label. So there's on YouTube, you can read the label. On Facebook, you can read the label. You get this at the Wine Vine. I've had several vintages of this wine. They've carried it for years. Um, I love it. Uh, next week, uh, next week we'll do another red wine. We've been doing a lot of white wines lately. Next week we'll do another red wine. And, uh, and if there's something that you would like me to talk about next week, because it is whining with the professor, um, you go ahead and, uh, and post in the comments below either, or I guess the comments are above on Facebook. I don't remember. Post in the comments, either YouTube, Facebook. I'll, I'll read through those comments, and, uh, and if there's something interesting to talk about, then we can do that next week. Until then, uh, I am signing off.